Because whether you associate with people pleasing behaviors, I'm going to have the green box as no, like, no, I'm not a people pleaser. I'm green and very good. Uh, and uh, and uh, red as Yes, I have a slight challenge of people pleasing behaviour. So the way that you're going to vote on this for anyone that's new, Janine and others, um, is if you go towards the top of your screen, you'll see view options, like top of your Zoom, and then annotate, and then stamp, and then star. So view options, annotate, stamp, and star. Uh, please do not feel swayed by the vast majority of people that feel. If you're like, no, Helen, I do never, I never people please, then feel free to stick your star in no. Uh, but right now, uh, it would look like we are a community of people pleasers. And um, I actually thought on the, ooh, one person who's done a squiggly, not only are you not a people pleaser, you are so confident that you have decided not to use the star and, and use, I love that, I love that, right, you you can help us all. Um, yeah, and when we were talking in the podcast about it, and Sarah was like, are you a people pleaser? And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want the label of being a people pleaser. However, I do definitely do a bit of people pleasing. So I think there's almost like, do you label yourself it or do you identify with some of, with some of the behaviours that we're going to talk about? OK, everybody. Um, so it's it's a challenge for the majority of us. I think we can we can admit to that. And um, what I wanted to do was just reflect a little bit on the, the signs of people pleasing. Um, and we talked about these on the podcast, but I wanted to get a bit of an assessment of which ones as a group we identify with. So I'm gonna talk about the signs and signals of people pleasing. And then in the breakout, the thing that I really wanted to focus on is a bit of the sort of what the reasons might be uh, for it. So that's part of the discussion we're gonna have. So let me talk first of all about the signs of people pleasing, and then I wanna get you to vote on the ones that resonate uh, or are reflected in your kind of your experience. So. The first, the first sign, uh, signal of people pleasing behavior is when you say yes, but you're thinking no. So <laughs> you're like, I don't really want to do this. I don't, of course, of course I will do this. Yes, no problem. Uh, so that is the, the first sign of people pleasing. Uh, the second one is when you like, you kind of over apologize, especially when things aren't your fault. Um, I remember I did this. <laughs> I remember a very specific time when I used to work for Virgin. And in terms of the trigger for this, it was a bit of insecurity actually. So when I was working for Virgin, I had my first child, Henry, and I'd come back after maternity leave and I was trialing um, a compressed hours. So basically where I didn't, I did my hours Monday to Thursday and on Friday, I was supposed to be like, you know, doing amazing if, or just like, I don't know, I would say looking after Henry, but it was mainly amazing if, um, and I was really rubbish at it because I felt, I just felt like I wasn't doing a very good job of anything. Like I wasn't doing amazing if, my head was still in work, I wasn't on a team. And I apologized all the time. I was like, I'm really sorry, I can't come to that meeting. I'm really sorry, I can't do it. I'm really sorry, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, and it was my manager, James. He was like, Helen, stop saying sorry. And it took him to sort of call me. He's like, you don't need to apologize. And I just felt like I had to say, I don't know, I just like please everybody all the time. And sorry was sort of my indication that I was struggling with, with that situation. So maybe, maybe that resonates with you. And um, the third one is when you put other people's needs above your own. Um, so it's almost like they, they might be upset or they might be struggling with their work and you prioritize them and their needs, but at the cost of you. So you become more tired or you become more constrained um, or, you know, you, you become more challenged by a situation, but you sort of, deprioritize yourself because you're putting them you're putting them first and sometimes you might need to do that but if you're doing it all the time you're basically putting yourself at the bottom of the pile or at the bottom of your to-do list all the time it's not great and um, the fourth one is where you actively avoid conflict so um maybe you you think i do have some feedback for example to give sarah um but i'm not going to do it because i don't i don't want to create any kind of conflict and your aversion to any kind of friction or any kind of discussion slash debate um means that you you can avoid it i think uh i've had this a little before i don't know if you have any you've kind of listened to our podcast on radical candor or read the work on radical candor uh, which is kim scott's work the the, there's a there's a box on the radical candor model which is all about ruinous empathy it is where you you care personally about somebody so I would like say for example I would care personally about Sarah uh, and her career but then you're, you're not able to challenge directly bit waffly beat around the bush don't kind of communicate clearly and that's sort of the box of uh, ruinous empathy it is the box that I fall in on the, on the, on the on the Kim Scott radical candor model but that's sort of what might might show up for you here if, if you're avoiding conflict 
The fifth one, I wonder how many boxes you're currently associated with everyone. Uh, the fifth one is where you basically really blur the boundaries. So you you have you have this idea of boundaries. So I might have, oh, I I will leave the office at five o'clock and go and do some exercise because I know exercise is good for me. But you constantly blur your boundaries. You're like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I, I won't do my exercise today. I'll, I'll do that call with you instead or whatever your boundaries are. So you sort of have an idea of what your boundaries, what you'd like them to be, but you constantly blur them because of other people rather than really protect them. Uh, the sixth one is all about um, sort of basically an inability to ask for help so you take on more work than you can feasibly do um uh, and and it partly is because you don't want to ask for help maybe you don't want to be a bother to other people because you're like oh they've got a lot on as well or i don't you know it's, it's that sort of thing um and so you 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 might you might try and ask for help but then you might sort of sort of hide the help so um if there's any chance that you could go to that meeting for me, but don't worry if you can't, it's fine. Um, you know, like hide the help. <laughs> so it's a very small request. It's not a very specific request for help. Uh, and that's, yeah, you might not want to be a bother. You might think, oh, they're busy too. The seventh one is where you're a bit of a chameleon. Um, so this is where you adapt yourself so much to fit in around other people. So, you know, you're kind of, you're not confident enough in your own, uh, identity in your own um, character that you will often put on a persona to fit around uh, other people um, and I've definitely done this and I, I I sort of almost don't realize I'm doing it in the moment it's only like a couple of months in when somebody that knows me really well is like mm, you're acting a bit weird uh, that I suddenly go oh gosh I've sort of morphed into this environment and do you know when I really realize it's when I look back now at pictures of myself and I'm like the, the main company I did this in was actually in BP um, and I, there were two signals that other people had to tell me about this the first was a conversation with a coach I think I mentioned this in the podcast but um where I was um I was in this coaching session and it, it was I think it was in person uh because because she saw she saw me I don't think it wasn't zoom wasn't really a thing then uh but I was I remember I was talking to her and I was doing this and I was like yeah everything's going really well we're really driving things forward I was like really punching my hands and she was like what's this and I was like oh my gosh I've like morphed into this like a slightly aggressive person um and and uh I really struggled with that but also when I look at what I wore I really like not only were my behaviors morphing like actually my clothes I look at me now and I'm like oh my god could you have worn <laughs> any more formal clothing like I'm actually quite an informal bright colorful person but there was a lot of boxy dressing going on um so yeah a bit bit too much bit too much of a, a bit too much of a comedian could be a, could be a signal uh, it's going too far um and the last one is where you your validation your sense of worth is based on what other people think of you so you only think you're doing a good job if somebody says that you're doing a good job you haven't got that kind of confidence in your own uh, your own ability and your own achievements to disconnect from other people's opinions so i hope that's not too depressing everybody <laughs> uh, yeah, mate. so what we're going to do is stick stars on and um, you can have as many stars as you identify with but let's let me know of all those ones that we talked about um so uh, uh, i'll just really repeat them really quickly uh, so the first one is yes when you mean no saying sorry too much putting other people before your own avoiding conflict blurring your boundaries hiding the help that you might need being too much of a chameleon basing your self-worth on other people's opinions of your work let's have a look <laughs> uh which ones are most most of an issue for us okay ah Turns out all of them, <laughs> not that insightful other than we're all struggling with quite a few things. I mean, if nothing else, everybody take a little bit of uh, support from the community that this is a, it's pretty normal. Uh, and so, yeah, and, 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 you know, you're not alone with this, uh, but that also, I guess, I guess the point here is that this is all, this is all relevant for all of us, but relevant for the people that you work with too. Like I would, I mean, obviously we are a community, we're a slightly biased community of people like, that like learning about ourselves and career development, but it's very likely that you could not only spot this in yourself, but in other people. So for example, could you be a sorry spotter like my manager was for me? Or could you be like, Helen, what's going on with this? Like my coach was for me. So you might be able to take what we're talking about today and use it for yourself but perhaps to support other people who probably would also put lots of stars on the screen um so what i want to do now before i kind of go into i've got three very specific ideas for action particularly they're the ones that have worked for me and that we've had quite a lot of feedback on from the podcast I want to do a bit of a breakout don't worry if you can't do that i'm going to automatically put people into breakouts if you can't go in just hang around in this room it's only going to be for i think we'll just do 
six minutes so it's pretty quick pretty quick chat um but the the conversation i'd love you to just talk about in your breakouts is why do you people please like what is we've talked about you know what might your people pleasing look like but why are you lucky like, what are you worried about um what's the reason you know some people might be i've just always done it since i was a child like there are actually some interesting psychology about this being quite a, something that's um inbuilt into us from a very young age particularly women uh but all there might be some other reason um, something very specific right now, for example. Um, and the bit I really would love you to talk about is what is your motivation to do anything different? Like, because you're like, we're all people pleasing for lots of reasons. And um, maybe you talk about why, but why might you want to change? I think if we can anchor onto what could be better if we didn't do it, then it might give us the motivation to put talk in, about some of the actions that I'm going to I'm going to share with you. So that's the plan. Why do you people please? What could be better in your life or career if you didn't? Um, and then we will come back and share and I will give you some ideas for actions about that. What's the reason why you people please? Uh, let us know in chat. What is your what is your trigger for people pleasing? Why, why are we people pleasing? Let us know. Uh, position yourself. So uh, insecurity, don't want to let people down, wanting to help others, childhood traits, Julia says, really interesting, inbuilt into wanting to help others. Yeah, it's sort of, I, I think that's probably mine, Kate, like I really like being helpful, but sort of sometimes it goes too far and I'm like, oh, by helping other people so much, I sort of not help myself in that situation. But you need easier to avoid conflict. It is, I think it is really useful. I also think when I was reflecting on this, I think it is worth, um, I think there's a link between this stuff and confidence gremlins. So for example, if you if you worry about people not liking you, for example, that's one of the most common confidence gremlins we see. Um, if you are afraid of conflict, that is another one of the most common confidence gremlins we see. So I think there are some, some links here uh, between why you might people please and why you might also need to cage some confidence gremlins um learning off others that's interesting sarah uh, if you're around lots of people who are also people please it's interesting um where did you get to in terms of the motivation to change what 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 could be better in your work or perhaps life uh if you found a way to stop people pleasing quite as much if it wasn't such a part so more energy and impact less risk of burnout yep what else stop feeling of exhaustion so that kind of tired and that recognition that actually it's tiring putting ourselves at the bottom of this list all the time be happier uh true to your values happier more respected find the role more satisfying you validate yourself yeah more gravitas greater impact more time for the important work I mean, I think these are really interesting statements that you should probably stick on a post-it note, everybody. Like, you know, if you want to, this stuff will be hard, particularly if you've been doing it for a long time and it's learnt behaviour from childhood. It is going to be hard. I don't want to kind of undermine how tricky it might be to change this stuff. But I think if you can, I found this with my confidence gremlins, the more you can attach yourself to your motivation to do something different and the more you can keep that in the front of your mind, the easier is a funny word, but the the more prepared you are to try is probably the best the best thing is i don't think don't think this is easy but the more prepared you are to try if you can see the motivation very clearly so those statements that you're sharing here i would i would stick it on your phone put it on a post-it note basically keep it keep it in front of you some ideas for action in terms of what we can do so the first thing that i find quite interesting when i was looking at the research was just the importance of creating a pause so very often we are people pleasing by default because it is a learned behavior yes i can do it no problem let me take that on of course i can like all that kind of stuff it we are doing it by default and actually if we can just create a pause we can think it through and it, this is a really simple tactic where you'll just say um let me have a think about it and i'll come back to you or i'll consider it and come back to you later i think finding your language of the pause is really interesting um because you can say not a problem let me think about it or i'll come back to you later if that's okay but whatever whatever the way that you need to create a pause is it will help you to prioritize yourself more because part of the reason is this default mode of yes or sorry or whatever it is finding a way to create a pause a really good tactic just to give yourself basically time to think and do something different so we're aiming to go from doing it by default to doing something different and the pause is the bit in between so i would think about what is your pause sentence or statement that you can start to say uh, that might help stop collaborate and listen yeah yeah exactly like you're just trying to you're just trying to create um 
It's that sort of conscious incompetence. We're trying to be more sort of consciously incompetent of when we're saying yes or whatever it is we're doing by default and just create a bit of pause. Um, can I come back to you on that, Helen? Um, uh, I just need 10 minutes and then to look at my diary and then I'll confirm anything, <laughs> but just create a bit of pause and it helps you to just get this right and clear in your brain. Second thing, uh, what can we do? I got a lot of comments on this one that actually shifting from the language of can't to don't is really powerful. So if you say, oh, I'm really sorry, I can't come to that meeting, someone else can create reasons why you can. Okay? <laughs> I'm really sorry, I can't make that today. Well, what if you didn't do that? Well, um, well, you could if, like other people can undo your can't for you. But if you say, um, actually, I don't take calls after five o'clock in the evening, or um, I don't miss Peloton in the week, or um, I don't do work at the weekend, whatever it is, it is very hard for someone to compromise your don'ts. They can quite easily compromise your can'ts because they can find a way that you can. So I think just shifting from I don't do uh, from, from using that instead of I can't could be a little simple thing that might help you. Um, and the third thing that we talked about is particularly for people who find themselves basing their validation on other people's um, sense of their work and worth. Pride postcards are really useful. So you just writing down, you know, what are you proud of? What do you do well? What is the work that is meaningful and significant to you? You don't have to do it in a postcard, but the idea is that you write this stuff down so that you can reflect on you and you're not basing your work and worth on what other people think of you. So the things to write, you know, this is what am I proud of? What are my successes? What's the work that I'm doing well at the moment? Um, it's those sorts of things. And it's keeping that front of mind rather than having other people kind of fill your mind with their, their thoughts of you. So it's just three quick things that you might want to do. I personally have found the pause in the language the most helpful, like sort of because I can use, do that more habitually, whereas this feels like something that I would sort of have to plan time to do. But um, whatever works for you. Conscious of time now, so just a couple of last things for you. The pod sheet on this one is, I think it's a particularly helpful one, given how many people um, might uh, need this. This is on our website. Um, if you go to podcast page, it's on there. Squiggly swaps. This is a new asset that we created last week. has gone down really well. If you haven't if you haven't seen it, it's a good one to share. It's all about the language that we use and why we might need to change from ladder like language to more squiggly language. I'm going to put the links to this in chat in a second for you. Um, and then the last thing is this asset, um, which we have created. It's the top 10 podcast so last week we reached uh, two million downloads of the squiggly careers podcast and we have done an asset uh an asset that's such a marketing language we've created a document that has the top 10 podcasts in um and it's also got all the links and all the pod sheets in one place so i've stuck the links to that stuff in the chat for you so feel free to copy download share as much as you can thank you very much i know two million who knew <laughs> we started with just two me and sarah listening uh, and now there's two million mad uh but um yeah hopefully we can keep growing because it's one of the best ways that we can reach people to help people with their podcast so who knows who knows where we'll be at the end of the year but um in until then we're very happy with two million we'll settle with that but please do share this stuff to help other people and um, we next week's podcast is on how to build high trust teams i think um so uh if that is useful to you it's a build on the psychological safety stuff with amy edmondson so it might be might be a, a nice addition for you uh, but otherwise we'll leave you to your week thank you all the new people see you all soon have a good rest of your week everyone take care bye